me get this one right here. This one? Yes, sir. Let me get you a fresh one. Hold on. All right. Here, take this one. All right. Thank you. Take care of yourself. How'd you get into working out? I see you doing you doing a lot of bar workouts. Um, actually, I've always done it. I used to be a fire explorer. Okay. When I was like 15 or 16 years old, 15, 16, something like that. I was a fire explorer, and that's one of the main things they did was push-ups. You go jogging in your uniform, your boots up the hills, and then uh, they had a pull-up bar, and you'd have to do them and yell out whatever post you were part of at that time, your last name post, and, uh, you know, however many count you can get you said a fire explorer yeah, yeah. What, what is that to be a firefighter okay word yeah it's like trying out type of thing eh, it's like it's a program for kids like it basically get them get them off the streets yeah and if you wanted to pursue it as a firefighter it i don't want to say it helps you it does somewhat but it's not like it's credentials it, you yeah, know, yeah, you yeah yeah schooling and all that other yeah. real stuff you got to do but so how often cool. how often are you working out um it's weird if i have a work like a crazy work schedule for the week i might not work out for like five days a week but then some days i'm going go seven you know what i mean I don't okay know. It just yeah, depends. yeah. Just, i don't have a set schedule i'm not like real militant and get yeah. up like, let's fucking go but i do say let's fucking go you yeah yeah I mean? I mean yo you look you look fit bro you look fit. <laughs> right, you, dude, i don't want to be a fucking old burnout i got to be able to climb shit still and yeah run and be able to hold my own if we're painting or something and get yeah. caught jammed up or whatever That's what i'm saying you, you're saying you're still active a little bit yeah 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 i mean I go out, I'm not going to say I'm like these other dudes and drop names, but my guys are like fucking <laughs> insane, you know yeah. what I mean? I could go, I go with them, you know, I just, sometimes I got to I gotta pull the pin because I got to get up early the next day or I got kids, stuff, and family shit to do and, yeah, you know, like most people. It's, like, it's, a, it's I think about that a lot, it's hard to be a long, I call it like a long-term bomber, lifelong bomber, there's few of those because yeah. you got to sacrifice type everything else, you know? I think... I like it. I'd like to say that's cool and I would want to do that, but realistically, like I'm getting older. I don't, I don't, I can do it on and off. Like I go through flashes. I'll go and yeah, I'll fucking paint. We'll go tomorrow. We'll go the next day. We'll go, we'll go the next week. We'll drop a piece. We'll go do bomb, whatever the hell. And then I won't do shit for like a month, two months. You know what I mean? I drop into something else. I go to, I have another like scene, whatever I'm involved in. I go hang out with those dudes. You know, I get bored of that shit. I go back to the art, mm -hmm. get bored of the art because I get fucking bored easily with shit. Yeah. I just, I can't see the same shit over. I'm just like, God, get that fucking shit out of my face. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. When did you When did you first get into graffiti? Um, that was probably first get into it. I was at eighth grade, seventh eighth grade. Um, I wasn't tagging or doing anything at the time. I just, I was a big fan. I used to drive. My mom would drive us down the ten freeway, and we lived out off the in San Gabriel Valley off the ten freeway. And anytime we take the ten going to downtown, it was just like. Bam, 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 bam. You'd see all the tags, and then you get to like the panic zone. You see pieces, and you get farther. You see burners, and then tags, and throw ups, and shit like that. And it was cool. It was it was fucking dope. It was like finding a new language on the wall. You know what I mean? Yeah. Sick. So that was like eighth grade. When did you actually start? <clears throat> you know, bombing. Um. Well, ninth grade, we got as soon as we hit ninth grade, it was on. We had bus passes. We had fake bus passes. It was still the RTD. The bus out here is MTA now, but it was RTD. Mm -hmm. And we had fake passes, and all of us would get the... From high school, we would jump to the bus and then take it to the station, which is in Almani. And from there, we would just take off to, like, Long Beach. we go to Hollywood and downtown and just end up in, <clears throat> like... I, know, I, I noticed, though, that, like, you know, the... The other day I was talking to someone and they were saying like, oh, regional styles don't really exist as much anymore. And right away, my, my off rip reaction was like, oh, you're right. Like now with Instagram, with social media, with all the sharing, it's like flicks on steroids. It's like Flickr on, ev it's like the <laughs> Flickr 10.0, you know, like yeah. someone does some shit in LES in New York City. You might live in LA, you might live in SF and you're going to know that they did that shit oh, like yeah. the next day. And, yeah. you know, it kind of makes styles blend together. It kind of makes things start 
but maybe back in the day, like this place had really its own regional style. This place really had its own. You could see that it was from there. But when I come here and, uh, you know, we drive around and shit, I'm like, you could still see that shit. Yeah. You could definitely with L.A., just even not even just like the style, but also the placement of what they're doing. Like here, it's a lot. It seems to me like New York's a walking city a lot of the time. So people are hitting, you know, the walls right away. Not that they don't hit walls out here, but here's a lot of heavens. <laughs> It's a lot of heavens. The yeah. back of the billboard for me is like classic, classic LA back of the billboard oh, yeah. um, or front of the billboard, but the back seems to run more and uh, sides of the highways. Like you, you got the highway, you got that little hill and you got that wall and then you, they always hit up on that wall. Yeah. Big rollers, big rollers, like to the point where you see that and you're mm. like, did they do this? How did they do this shit? Fucking monster, huh? Monster rollers. Um, What do you think about that? I think definitely like, uh, Certain areas you see style like the east side had more straight letter gangster, heavily influenced gangster shit like that shit. That's where it came from. The you know gangsters, their style, their blocks, their fucking writing, all that shit was dope. And that a lot of east side people from the people from the east side adapted that style. You know what I mean? They picked up on it. What was their natural surroundings? You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I think like the west side. You know I'm not from the west side, but I definitely know they had more. Like of a New York influence, they had like that wild shit was dope. You go and you're like, fuck, those colors are fucking insane. You know what I mean? They're fucking weird arrows and all kinds of cool shit. You know what I mean? And you know that's what you see. Like you said, you go certain areas and you, you'll you'll know more more so what area, what person was from what area at yeah. the time. You know what I mean? And um, to go back to you, like you're saying about your pictures and all that stuff like that. Like nowadays, fucking back then it was like if you were lucky to have a cool camera. Or you were racking those shitty disposable cheap ones in the foil. You know what I mean? The Kodak, the little, those mm-hmm. fucked up. <laughs> we had so many of those yeah. and it sucks because we go bombing and you step back to try to take a fucking, like a rooftop or something where you had no way to zoom in. Your piece is like that big on a square. It looks like shit. So your pictures are trash. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. yeah. How do you, how do you think you're, you're from San Gabriel Valley? Yeah. Uh, what do you, how do you think? I don't, I don't know anything about that neighborhood. Uh, other than you being from there, how do you think that neighborhood have, have influenced you? What was that neighborhood like? And kind of your upbringing in that neighborhood, how did it influence everything from you as a person to just even just your graffiti and the way that you approach it? Um, there was two, to me, like growing up in the San Gabriel Valley, like the first crew I ever seen, and I'm not even bullshitting, I'm from SKA. It's, it was SKA. I saw the motherfuckers from like, I don't know, the 10 freeway goes down. It was like Covina. I don't know where. But towards L.A., you know what I mean? It was all, the middle was crushed. It was another crew, STK. Them dudes were bad motherfuckers, too. They're still around. Our crew and their crew is still there. Um, I, I see a lot of influence. Like, them were the first two that just go ham from, you know, the San Gabriel Valley. To me, that was just like, fuck, these motherfuckers are about it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, and then later on, as time went by, I got an SK. I uh, ran into Pryor and Fib and my my brothers and stuff. And it was just, it was like, it's like destiny. It was just meant to happen. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you you can't you grew up there your pretty much your whole life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's not even just like the the like the heavens or the rooftops that they do out here or the sides of the highways, but it's also I feel like you know you've heard people say that in LA you got to worry about more about the gangs when you're painting when you're painting like style writing graffiti than you got to worry about the cops versus New York you got to worry mo- you got to worry more about the cops and I feel like that has an influence in the way that the graffiti actually is done. And the type of things that get done. Um, have you had any, you know, experiences with that or? Yeah, man. Like early '90s too. Like mid nine, early '90s, mid '90s was fucked up because it was like you you couldn't tell the tiger. The tigers dressed like gangsters. Gangsters dressed like tigers, and you couldn't tell who the fuck was what. You know what I mean? And back then it was like somebody rolls up on you. Hey, where you from? That's somebody, some gang shit. You know what I mean? You, you got to answer. You know, I'm from nowhere. I'm from somewhere. You know, one or the other is gonna happen. Um, Either they let you go or they get jacked or get beat up or shot at or whatever, you know. But sometimes as the 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 morph started happening, you get guys that were tag banging and roll up, hey, where the fuck you from? And you're like, no, I don't bang. Well, this is so-and-so crew. And you're like, oh, I'm from this crew. Oh, you fucking ranker. You know, you're like, hey, I was trying to rank, you know, or not that that happened to me, but I'm saying like, I've seen that happen where dudes like, hey, it wasn't ranking, but the way they ask you is not the way you would tic- typically like, hey, you're right, or, you know, what do they call it? You know, whatever the fuck you do. Yeah. And it, it was kind of like a, it was like a catch-22. It was kind of fucked up, you know what I mean? And definitely at the time, you you got caught up in, it was easy to get caught up in jacked or fuck. Like I said, you get in a bad situation quick. Yeah. And you had to think fast, and that was, yeah. 
do you think that being fast do you think that's changed at all or is it still like that in in the modern day la graph scene because you're talking what uh late 80s early 90s it was like early 90s for okay. me. i wasn't i wasn't in the streets in the late 80s I, i'd be bullshitting you i was still like junior high eighth mm-hmm. grade you know seventh grade yeah but um i think yeah early 90s you know what i mean it was like that and then uh, mid 90s too as well and now uh, i mean you, it's it's still out there i'm sure it is i don't see it though i don't really get you know running to people and maybe because i'm older now and i don't look like a little kid yeah, <laughs> I, don't yeah. I, just, I don't know i don't know I see people and I say, "Hey, what's up?" You say, "What's up?" And you know, and then most and nowadays, like it's like every mostly fucking anyone you see in the streets all fucked up on meth. You know? Yeah, yeah. They're shot out like. Mm-hmm. Just, do you do you see gra- do you see graffiti any differently? You've been you've been painting since the uh, since the early '90s. You've been doing it for a while. You know, um, as time goes on, you grow up. I know you have a you have a family. It seems like your your priorities are in a different place. You still write graffiti, and you still yeah. like it's still in your heart. But right. at the end of the day, like your priority is probably your family and your job and et cetera. It's not like I got to be the most up. Do you see any differently now that uh, as time has passed? To say that again, to act, to be up as much as I yeah. Like, do you oh. see graffiti as a thing to, that you do in your life any different? Like, you told me that uh, you told me that you fell. When like a, a while ago you hurt your leg because the roof caved in <laughs> on you, like type of shit like that, you know? Do you yeah. see it any differently? Uh, I mean, I know, I know that the, you know, the repercussions of shit. You know, what I mean, I'm not stupid. I don't go out and, and I'm not one of these idiots that says, "Oh, LA's a free for all. We can just paint where the fuck we want." Nah, you get a cop on a bad day and you arrest your ass, and then what? You you sound like a stupid ass. You know what I mean? But I think, yeah, like I go out. I like going. I like still like having fun. You know what I mean? I go with my crew and stuff like that. We were act. We just it's fun. You know what I mean? It's, I don't see it like work. I see it like it's like leisure. Yeah. But um, there's definitely if I feel like I'm tired or I got to work early and I'm just like, oh, fuck it, I ain't going. I don't care. You know? Yeah. I don't get that FOMO shit where I feel like I'm missing out. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Would you be down to talk about what happened with the when the roof caved in? Sure. So, yeah, what, what uh, happened? Okay. Well, I was painting a roof. I was with uh, my buddy Zess and we were finished painting. Um. We came, I came down already. I was already done. And then there was a third guy with us. He was up there painting, like, just bullshit. I don't know what he was doing. And he got to the edge of the roof. And he he got to the edge, and there was a second roof he had to climb to get to the top one where we were painting. And he was up there, and he looked like a, like a scared dog. He was just, like, the height got him. I don't know what. He was just fucking froze. So I go, what are you doing? Get down here. So he goes, I, I can't. So I walked up to give him a hand, and I was holding him down. To, from the first to the second, as soon as we stepped down the, the, from the second to the first roof, then the floor, I took a step, and it was like corrugated. I didn't know that that area was like weak corrugated, so there was like rafters that supports the, you know, they were going mm-hmm. down the roof, and I had stepped in the fucking corrugated folded, and I had a backpack with, I shit it, I shit you, not look like a camping bag. I had a bucket of paint, like roller paint. I had beer. I had that shit stuffed to the rim with spray cans, and the zipper didn't even go up. It was just like, <sighs> so all that weight. I was falling forward and I don't know what the fuck my instinct kicked in. I just seen my face go into the floor first. So I put my foot out. And I kind of landed like in a push up position and my leg kind of went, <laughs> went that way. It said, see you later. And I was like, fuck. I caught my, like, touched my face and my fucking hands were like slapped the asphalt. And I'm surprised. I was like, fuck. I didn't fall on my fucking, you know. And um, I just remember trying to get up and I was like, oh shit. I just went like, damn. I couldn't move. So I told, then the guy was like, the guy that I, I tried to help down initially was like, what do I do? What do I do? I said, man, go fucking call Zess, man. So he fucking called. He was already down the front of the building. And um, like Spider-Man, he comes back and I go, hey, I can't move. He goes, I got you. And he's fucking picked me in the bag up and threw me on his shoulder. He just ran out and we left, right? We drove me. They drove me to the hospital. I had to go to county for county hospital for. Um, well, the day I went in there, I thought I was I didn't know what to expect. I never had a broken fucking bone or nothing to that point at all. Um, so I went in there and the surgeon was like, we got to do an x-ray. Your foot looks pretty crazy. I thought my ankle was broken the whole time. I was like, oh, my ankle sucks. It hurts. I had converse on it. My converse looked like a, like a, like a tennis ball wasn't down there. You know what I mean? It couldn't even take it off. And he got, um, he got the x-ray and he was like holding it up. And he was like, yo, he's an Indian dude. He's a cool doctor. He was like, like, what happened? I was like, you know what? I was getting chased by some gangsters and I, I didn't anticipate, I was running over a wall, I jumped the wall. I didn't anticipate the fall, and I fell. And he goes, oh, that's what happened. I said, yeah. And he goes, okay, I got to call the sheriff because this, this is a crime now. And I goes, hey, whoa, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. 
Was, let me change my story. I was on a ladder, <laughs> and inside of a building, my buddy was, you know, we were painting inside of his warehouse, and the ladder fell, and he goes, oh, okay, well, okay, you know, whatever. So he, he was looking at the x-ray, and he's like, this is some bad shit. You need an emergency surgery. So we went, I was like, okay, what does that mean, you know? So I had a fucking bullshit name, fake, you know, everything you could think of. So when I fell down, they had told me, um, you know, we might be able to set your foot, and it'll be cool. But it shit didn't happen. The next day, he was like, yo, we, we talked to this, the orthopedic, and we got to do some serious shit to your foot, your leg. It's like, damn. So for nine days, I was there. I was going to get surgery like in a week. And then they took my blood, and then they were like, you were in line because there was like eight, six, six to eight people. Oh, you, you were in the hospital for nine days? Yeah. Okay. I was laying there. Well, I was laid out for two and a half, just my leg fucked up, and I was waiting to get surgery. And they were like, well, you, you, you hit the jackpot because... We did everybody. Look, they got to do your blood work and shit. They're like, you're blood, you're fine. We're gonna bump you to number two instead of eight because all these other guys, their fucking health is bad, so they gotta kind of wait and I don't know whatever for whatever reason. And they went. <clears throat> I got the surgery, and I was laying there just laid out, and there was this dude in there, and I remember just like the only thing I really remember that 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 whole that whole situation when they wheeled me into recovery, they have all these beds like like one, two, three, four, five beds. One, two, three, four, five beds. And I was laying there like sleeping, just groggy and tore up as shit. And I don't know what time it was. It must have been. I don't even know what time or the day or night. Because <clears throat> all the curtains were closed. And this dude, caddy corner for me, was... I just remember hearing him yelling. So I woke up. Excuse me. I leaned off. And I looked at his... I was kind of like, you know, laying on, up on an angle. And I looked over. And he's fucking spazzing. He's ripping his clothes off. He takes a shit on the floor. And he's fucking smacking it like whack. Rah, and he's, he's handcuffed to the bed. And he's rattling like fuck, you know, going crazy. And I look over, and they're yelling at from the hallway. The nurse and the fucking the sheriffs come in there running, and they just baton this dude to oh, beat shit. the shit out of him. The nurses? No, no, no. The nurses oh, the were sheriffs. yelling for the sheriff because okay. it's county hospital sheriffs on every floor. Yeah. The sheriffs come running down there, and they fucking baton this just brut, 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 like just beat this dude, beat the piss out of him. Then they grab him and they're dragging him by the ankles, shit smearing down the floor like that, like <laughs> fucked up, dude. Meanwhile, you got open wounds and you got staff and all kinds of yeah, bacteria. everything. You're like, everything. fuck, man, I was scared because I was the closest thing to him, caddy corner, you know what I mean? He had yeah. a guy next to him, but I was like, they got to take him out. I was by the entrance though, or the exit, whatever. So they took him out. I'm just like, dang, I got to get the fuck out of here. And then the social worker kept saying like, hey, we need to we need to find out um your, your social security and your information because nothing's lining up. Like, you're not, we looked up your name, your address, your social security, nothing, we don't find any records of you. And uh, she had told me this one day, then it, it turned into the next day. So days have been dragging on. It was about my ninth day there. And then she comes in one, one more. She came in one morning with an envelope she, or a folder. She's like, you know what? Something's not right. I'm going to come back with the sheriffs and talk to them and talk to them. And then I'll get back with you. And I'm like, fuck. So I called up my buddy. I called Revolt and go, hey, I got to get out of here now, dude. Like fucking now. He's like, I'll be there in a minute. He came driving down, picked me up. I go, I'm in room, whatever, floor, this, this. He came up, and I'm still in my gown. And I'm laid out in the bed, and I look over. And I'm like, yo, help me out. And he, you know, he picked me up, and one arm around the other, like a wounded soldier. And we just start walking out like nothing. Just left the whole building. Fuck it, just gone. I had my fucking, I had staples in my leg and wrapped in this big old donut. And we're walking down the hall, and we're going to the car. We're like, we got to go, we got to go. So we get out. We finally got to the exit, and it was like, fuck it. He goes, I'm parked four stories down. So I'm standing, I go, shit, I can't even walk, bro. <laughs> I had my crutches in my arm, and he just fucking carried me, and we went right to the car, and we just dipped, you know what I mean? Yeah, and so that was that was, was post-surgery that you that you dipped? Yes. Okay, so they gave you surgery, you were, like, recovering. Yeah, I was there for a few days, and yeah. then it just got a little hairy, and I left, you know what I mean? Yeah. I didn't want to get caught up or answer questions or sheriff, you know what I mean? It was just like, ah, that's too much. Yeah, did you have to pay anything? No. <laughs> so you just bounced before just that bounced. shit happened? Yeah, yeah, wow. Yeah. So, I mean, I just bounced under a fake name, fake yeah, yeah, yeah. Shit. that's... I don't want to say you could do that at county, but I guess, you know. Yeah, I wonder if you could still do that now because, you know, um, sadly, my homie just fell while painting in New York, right? Oh, I heard, man. That sucks, dude. You saw that, wow. yeah. Um, they think he's going to make a full recovery. They're not sure. I know he, he – whatever, it's a whole ordeal. But yeah, yeah. I know that he was uh, he was handcuffed <clears throat> and sh – he was handcuffed, I believe, but I know he was his feet were shackled to the bed. Um so that probably took because they probably had shit like that happen, right? Like people bounce if they know they're gonna get maybe I mean, arrested after. It, 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 realistically, there's there's like programs. If you don't have money, they I don't know what it is. You go and you have to fill out forms, and 
I just didn't want to deal with that shit. You know what I mean? I was just like, fuck, I don't want to be here. I want to get in and out. And I told myself, just whatever you got to do, just lie. It'll be over. And like, the faster you lie, the faster they eat it up, the faster you'll be out of here. Yeah. But it, well, that wasn't the case. It just got, it just caught me jammed up. And I eventually, it was weird because I went back and I went into a different building and I was like, hey, I need to get my staples out because I still remember, I still have staples and shit in my leg. A fucking bolt and I had all kinds of stuff. And I'm, I went to like one of the orthopedic reco- like rehab centers and I go, hey, or uh, rehabilitation buildings. Mm-hmm. I was like, I need to get this bolt out. You know where I got to go? I, I lost my paperwork. You know, I don't have a house right now. And they're like, oh, uh, yeah. they just kept pushing me through the next door. Go to that door. Go to that door. Go to that door. And I went and I would go. And eventually I got a, a, an appointment date, even though I had no paperwork. They kept giving me dates to come back, and they're like, yeah, and then they took out that bolt. I still got it at home. I should have brought it. It's cool. Oh, shit. And then they came, and they took out my staples, and they gave me a Darth Vader boot. I was walking around like half RoboCop with big old black boot. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. It was, it was crazy. I don't know how and why, but it, just, it happened that way. You know yeah. What I mean? So what, I don't know. I mean, what year was this, roughly? Fuck. Dude. Maybe you're, like early thousands. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe two three i don't know yeah yeah because yeah i feel like i don't even know you give them a fake social nowadays would that <laughs> shit even work you know what i, I mean just freeze. man i was in like, when i got in there too i was sitting they got me a wheelchair because after we had to drive up the, the uh zest goes hey i know how to get you you know we, we'll get you in the back we'll, we'll just drive up where the ambulances are so when i walked through with him up there they were like, he's like, hey, I need to get a wheelchair. My friend's been shot. And they're like, oh, fuck, get him a chair. Like, they just rushed me and brought me in. And they're like, where's your bullet hole? Yeah. I don't got one. I got a bad leg. Yeah. They go, ah, oh, put him in the corner. But they got me in. Yeah. So I sat, I got a wheelchair and I got to sit in the corner now. But the fucked up part is I had one arm under my knee holding my leg for about no bullshit, like 14 hours before I saw a doctor <laughs> sitting in the lobby. I was like, it hurt so fucking bad. I was wiping tears. Like, oh, yeah. I was like, fuck, this is killing me. My foot just. Yeah, because all the blood was hitting the bottom of my foot. You know, I wasn't. It wasn't elevated. It was at the lowest point. So all yeah, the blood, it was, yeah. Whoop, and it just jacked me. That shit hurt, dude. Yo, it's wild. Um, the shit that can happen on rooftops and on heavens. Like you didn't even. That shit just. The roof just caved in, and you it's know, fucking collapsed. Like they, they just folded. Or people you know climbing I mean? up there. People sometimes climb on, uh, on like little poles. The pole is not. Yeah, it's kind of screwed into the wall to an extent or it's held in by some shit. But, like, you know, you see people climb up the pole onto the roof or whatever. And it's like <laughs> that pole might Electrical not even... Electrical pole or something. That you know shit I mean? might not even be meant to support, like, 100 pounds, you know? Like, yeah, yeah. it's not meant for climbing. No. And somehow, sometimes, most of the time, they... Because st- you see in New York and out here, most of the heavens that can be done have been done at some point yeah, or another sure. yeah which means that matter the shit has been climbed mm-hmm. which means that the track record for falling is pretty low like you like let's say a thousand get done maybe there's maybe maybe not even one fall right but like one time when you get that bad fall like you know you snapped your leg my homie snapped his leg too uh, yeah. he was climbing up a fucking fire escape and i think you know you know the, how, like, they have that ladder that goes down? He was, like, he yeah. grabbed it or some shit or something happened, and then the shit just, cu- like, the ladder started Done. coming down, but he was, you know, really off the ground. He fell, and his shit just snapped right in half, like, just like a pencil. Uh, he was in the hospital. Vandal Squad showed up, et cetera. Got him. You know what I mean? Like, very similar to what happened to you. You know, like, the, like I think it was the exact, that part of the leg, too, but, you know, he... Fibula. Yeah, I think it was a fibula. <laughs> weak ass bone. <laughs> yeah, weak ass bone. <laughs> That's funny, dude. Yeah, uh, the funny part about that was, um, not funny, but they were like, oh, when I was in the hospital, they're like, the doctors go, hey, don't worry about it. There's football players break it all the time and they still play football. I was like, okay, great. What does that got to do with me? I can't yeah, walk. I was like, yeah, yeah. My yeah, fucking right? ankle was like that. Yeah. I thought, I'm telling you, I thought my ankle was broken. It felt like everything down there just felt just busted yeah but it wasn't it was it was it was fine it was just sprained but it was just swollen it cut my shoe off and, and that was it it was cool end of story it was it was fun you know yeah. time but experience so, that's cool though that uh that zess and revoke were there for you on that level you know like helping you out breaking you out of the shit my crew's been there for me for a lot dude. yeah you know i mean yeah 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 i think i think for the most part like we try to be there for each other you know what i mean and i think one you know one reason i think our crew and I'll say this is that uh, it's successful and not and I'm not talking money or none of that shit. I'm talking successful longevity with like 
we keep pushing that envelope going and going. I think I think it's because we got great leadership, you know that, and we've always had like. It's not one guy's a crew, our crew, no fucking, any crew I think that has one guy saying, I'm fucking leader, crew sucks, you know what I mean? Look at their turnaround rate, or, and I'm not picking on any crew particular, in particular, I'm just saying like, you can't be, I'm the leader of all this, is me, I'm the me, me, me. And if you look at the crew like that, a good leader puts his crew before him. Not a fucking, they're behind me and you ain't shit, I'm the fucking taking cell, all that bullshit. Nah, it's not, it's not how it works, you know, and I think for the most part, we got good leadership, we got a... You know, Eclipse, he's, he's like the Don Mega, you know what I mean? And the dude's, he puts a lot of people before himself, you know what I mean? And he doesn't, I don't think he really does it to expect things in return. He just, he's a good hearted human. Yeah, that's amazing. When did you, uh, when did you get down with the cruise that you're in? Um, I got an MSK. Yeah, um, MSK, WR, all that. Uh, I got an MSK like in 0405, but I had been hanging out with them for a long time, like uh, late 90s, you know what I mean? Me and Brock were with uh, with them in Orange Key. We were at a party one time. It was funny. It's a true story. And we were at a party, and it was like a bunch of old AWR like dudes. And we were like, these motherfuckers are bad. They're peas. Their style was just dope. You know what I mean? They were all there hanging out. It was a bunch of... It was a cool party. And Eclipse had pulled me and Brock to the side. He's like, yo, you know, I really... Like, I dig you guys. You know what I mean? You guys are cool. But you're the only two guys in your crew that can hang out with my, our crew. You know? <laughs> I was like, that's pretty sick. So we hung out, and that was it. You know, the rest is history. We've had a good relationship with... Uh, you know, everybody I've you know been involved with in the crew and stuff, and I love my I love my family. You know, what I mean, they're good people. You know, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, no no doubt. Uh, you know, me as a as a bystander watching, I grew up. Uh, you know, I had no access to the to the West Coast. I'm from the you know Northeast Coast, mm -hmm. and I would just see whatever graffiti I could see in person there and online. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but West Coast, I I never been to until years later. So. I was, even though I couldn't make it, I would see shit online, specifically like, you know, Augur, yeah, yeah. Augur, MSK, there was like a video with Revoke, I think it was like Dark Knight Rises or something like that. Oh, the billboard. It was edited so <laughs> well, the music. Yeah. Motherfuckers are bad, huh? That shit was sick, and <laughs> yo, they, um, I think it starts with them doing, them doing, uh, they're doing, uh, they're just doing outlines. But big ones on yeah. this like elevated platform of something almost looks like a water tower type of thing, but I don't think it was a water tower. And then the music starts and it's like, bah. and they're using like some special can and it's going like super high up. They lay <laughs> flat, and I was yeah. like, damn, yo, what is this? You know, it was my first time seeing it yeah, or something, yeah. and, I, and I started looking into it more. Came across Saber, you know, everybody. I went down the rabbit hole right. and I was like, oh shit, like, you know, in New York, there's like, there's like Iraq. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. you know, ecstasy, all those crews, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then out here, and they they do a lot for New York graffiti as a culture, more than just like them as a crew. I think that like I th I look at I look at it kind of like from one step back, <clears throat> and it's like it's not just like New York, it's not just like their crew getting up and them as people, but it's also like the whole graffiti scene and the whole like culture of downtown yeah. is being elevated to a different platform because of these individuals, and for that reason, and amongst other reasons, I respect what they're doing. You know, I could probably say the same thing about, you know, MSK, WR, um, with Los Angeles Graffiti because all of my friends from the East Coast, they know about a lot about LA Graffiti yeah. because the, the re to really know about what's good, you'd have to be from here, you know, yeah, to really right. know. But then, like, it's these crews and these groups of people at the end of the day who's bringing it to, like, yo, this is who we are. This is this is LA. This is, uh, oh, we do these huge stompers. Like, I thought of... Be, specifically because of the saber piece on the riverbed i was like oh so that's their thing like ginormous <laughs> ginormous you know stompers and yeah, shit yeah, like that yeah. so come to find out like i don't know if that's why it is the way it is but when i come out here there's giant stompers what do you oh, know like uh, you don't see you know you see rollers in new york like that um but not like not like that you yeah, know and right. and and it's usually out of towners to be honest with you oh, who they are, come out there and just yeah, yeah and they kill it with with what they're doing and right. when you see like a when the, like an LA head come to New York, you you know, because it kind of makes kind of makes noise. Mm -hmm. Not everybody, but yeah. a lot of people come right. out there and they make noise right away. So, you know, I have a lot of respect for 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 that bringing 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 who they are, yeah. who you guys are, and then it's awesome too to see it getting pushed to a different level with the art. You know, like I went last time I was here. Um, 
I went to I went to Zess's show. I didn't go to the opening, but I just went to go peep the paintings. Oh, the arch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. It's yeah, dope, huh? yeah. And I was like, Good yo, shit. this is ill yeah. because you know, at the end of the day, you know, like a graffiti writer made it to this to this level, and not even just labeling as a graffiti writer, but someone whose roots are within graffiti made it to this level. Not to get all crazy, but like usually people whose roots are from there don't make it to that level. Yeah, it's right. very you know very far yeah. and few. How many right, writers right. are there? How many make it to that level? And then how many can use that successfully without like cornifying themselves to really make a living off that shit? That shit to me is sick. You know, like yeah. some people be like, oh, that's selling out. Like I don't really see it as that. I think it depends on like your approach to how you do it. You know, I think that the way it's done most of the time is pretty pretty ill. I think. Yeah. Um. When you say, so, like, that's another thing, too. It's like, at what point, you know, how much damage you got to really do to before you can make a career change for the better and support yourself and for your family, whatever, with your art and not be called a sellout. Like, what yeah. the fuck do you want to do? Be a fucking bum and being able to just sit on the corner every day, every night and do jack shit, not have to wake up for any responsibility, but just stay out there just bombing? Like, cool. Yeah. I mean, if that's what you want, I'm not knocking it. That's dope. But you can't shit on the next guy for wanting a little more than that. You know what I mean? Just like you can't shit on the guy who wants less. You know what I mean? It's like, I'll give you an example. You know, in L.A. They, or out here, they I would hear like growing up, hey, we're fucking uh, uh, throw-ups go over tags and pieces go over throw-ups and all that bullshit. I think that's bullshit. You know that? Because who's to say like, my? I'll give you an example. My boy Brock77 is fucking scribing king monster tagger. That's all he wants. He doesn't want none of that sh- Nothing. Throw ups, pieces, but like nothing. He don't like that. So if he does a tag, is it cool that a dude that wants to do more, like bubbles and go over his shit wherever they see it and be like, oh, he's just a tagger? Nah, I think that's bullshit. Then not only that, Brock will sock you up. You know what I mean? <laughs> Fucking meat skull. That's what we call him. But yeah, I mean, for the most part, I think, you know, and then if a guy that just does straight letters, like you want, you're a guy who just does burners, like is it cool you just go over that dude because he that's all he wants to know? I think that's bullshit. I think, I think, but you know, you have to pick and choose your battles. Like, you go and you see some chicken scratch, like, you really know, like, homeless guy did that or something, and, you know, you got to decide if you're going to make that move and yeah. piss someone off and get lumped up for that or, yeah. or hey, it looks cool, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So that that's that was my take on that, you know what I mean? As far as people like, oh, sell out this, sell out that. I mean, I mean, you got to, you got to, I feel like you got to move to the next level in anything you do at the end of the day. Yeah. And like, you got to, you know, moving to the like evolution and also survival. Like, what do you, you, I feel like within the subculture of graffiti and also in other things like, you know, skateboarding, it's like, oh, if you do anything more than keep it 110% core, you're whack. Or people will think that like early <laughs> yeah. on. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, I yeah, think yeah. that that shit's changing because yeah. some of the OGs within those scenes are showing that like, nah, you got to evolve with your life. You're not just going to, right? No one, you're not going to think the same when you're 15 years old as when you're 35, 45, 55 yeah, years old. Sure. Definitely not. Definitely, definitely not. That's unless you're just like stunted, you know what I mean? Where you, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, something's wrong with you if you think about, if you think the same way you think when you were 15. At least growing up in L.A., I, I definitely know I don't think the same as definitely when I was 15 now. You know what I mean? 15, I was fucking just stupid, you know, all over the place, jumping on the bus, down, fucking buying crack and fucking Pico and Hoover out there, you know what I mean? Fake bus passes, going to MacArthur Park, shit that I would think right now, like, what the fuck? I would hope, never want my kids to be out there doing that shit or the next kid, if they ask for advice, I wouldn't shoot them that way. I'd be like, no, don't. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's a, it was a lesson learned and it was a good one. But I don't think for the most part I would want to anyone go experience that, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. How do you think you how do you think you dealt in your life with any negative aspects that came your way via one, just kinda like growing up in the street in, in Los Angeles and two, writing graffiti, which brings about racking, which brings about partying, which brings about fights, which brings about a lot of trespassing, which brings about <clears throat> boosting not even just paint, but just other shit and Kind of just a whole bunch, a whole slew of things that have nothing really to do with applying paint to a surface, but because of the lifestyle, it does have to do with it, you know. So, yeah. Um, how do you think that? Uh, how do you think that you know made you? Mm, it was like, a, it's almost like trial and error, you know what I mean? Or, you know, you're with your buddy, and you know that one day he's like, "Yo, he throws an idea, let's do this," and you're like, "Man, I'm not really feeling that shit." And then later on, you find out he's dead. And you're like, fuck, that sucks. I could have been right there. That shit happened numerous times to us. You know what I mean? Like, 
being fucking shot at, stabbed at, dudes chasing you with ice picks and broad. I was 15 getting chased on fucking Valley Boulevard by dudes out of high school with an ice pick just running after me on, <laughs> you know what I mean? And that shit sucks, dude. Yeah. Having a grown man chase your fucking ass at his kid, it's not cool. And, um, you know, then you get older in the same, it's like the same thing, you know, it, it everything repeats itself, you know what I mean? You get older, you're going rack, you're doing other shit racking. You know, I got, I've been caught up for stupid shit like that. I'm just like, what a waste. You know, I could have avoided that if I, you know, but live and learn. It's part of those bad situations made me want to do better for myself and lead me to good situations. You know what I mean? Cause I don't, I don't want to repeat that shit. Yeah. You know? yeah. Um, and then, you know, like I said, the, the worst thing you could do is just lose a friend, lose a homie, lose a family member over something where you, you're just like, fuck, you know, and I could have been right there with them. You know what I mean? And you know, it's unfortunate, but that's, that's how you learn. You know what I mean? Yeah. For the most part, for most people learn that way. You know, others, you know, Hey, do what you do. Yeah, it sucks to see when it happens to someone so young that they didn't really have a chance to learn because it's really yeah. a game of, it's really a game of chances. At the end of the day, it's kind of a game of numbers. You you do so many things so many times. And um, while I was talking to, to you know Talker about his fall, he gave me like uh, something that I haven't forgotten, which was like he told me a story from some movie. I don't remember the movie, but it was like a a quote mm. that he applied to like his situation. He's he's a uh, pretty sure he just turned 19 okay um and he was telling me that like in the mob quote or whatever the mobster or the police officer it's in the episode but i don't remember it off top exactly i'm gonna yeah, butcher yeah. it but he, they were like yeah the mobster has to get lucky every single time or the criminal gotta get lucky every single time the cop only gotta get lucky one time to catch them right yeah and uh in terms of like whether it be like substance abuse mm. where like one fucked up line just kills you which i think about all the time um like i'm not using or anything but like you know fr good friends of mine who i just grew up with um it only takes one time like i got a homie who paints roofs all the time man one of my best friends yeah and every single time that he goes out i worry um i try to keep it to myself because i don't want to be that person who's like yo you know what i mean like <laughs> don't do this don't do that like everyone has to choose their own path at the end of the day but i always think about like you're so used to not falling that you don't think it's possible because you've never fallen. Yeah. You know, you don't think it's possible. You, let's say you've done 300 roofs. In your mind, it's not possible. Like, like, I, yeah, so so then I think like, yo, but all it takes is one time and it doesn't even have to be your fault. Yeah, you know, like, like for you, like the roof caved in. And I think about that a lot in terms of like mad <laughs> other funny. shit. Like it sucks when they're, when the person is so young that they didn't have a chance to learn a lesson, like their one lesson or their one fall or their one whatever yeah. was like the the fin finality, you know? There was a time, it's a funny, it's funny now, but back then it was like, it was me and rest in peace, Norm. It was Norm. We were, I was staying at his pad in San Francisco and he goes, hey, I got a billboard. Let's get this billboard. So we climbed this building. We hit up, we got up the fire escape and we went through and, and the building there was, it was like a big building and the inside was cut out. So it was like hollow. You know what I mean? But it was so dark. There was these two. It was like side by side. I don't remember. We got up to the top and he goes, we just got to climb on this wooden plank, walk this plank. And the billboard's right there. And I was like, all right, cool. So we're walking this fucking, I can hear it crackling and making these weird sounds. And I'm, I can't see anything. I'm just like, man, it's dark. You know, so I got a coin and I dropped it. I, I was like, damn, what the fuck? And we kept going and whatever. We painted the bill. We painted the billboard. We were done. We go back, same way we cross that thing. And I'm like, how fucking like, deep does that go? You know what I mean? The next day he was working and he goes, hey, go get pictures. So I remember climbing the fire escape, went back up. And I, fuck, I seen that board and it was above like the hollow part of that hollow that building. And it was probably like, I don't know, nine or, I don't know how many stories it was. It was fucked up, a mean fall. And all we had was this ugly ass plank that went across the buildings you know what i mean and we walk and I, go, I call them i go hey motherfucker i go hey you know you know how low that shit was? the 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 drop was from where we climbed he goes no and i go dude you live here i'm sure you probably seen it or you know he says he, he didn't know so it could have been a bad situation if two guys walking on a decrepit ass plank backpacks with paint that's all that weight and just yeah. even splattered you know what i mean and yeah that's the shit like that happens you know what i mean like you said it just happens you don't expect yeah. it you don't anticipate it you're not ready for it it just it could happen, you know, at any moment. And you just got to try to be weary of your surroundings. You know what I mean? You want to take that chance, go for it. You know? Yeah, yeah. I feel like in L.A. is different, too, because, like, you know, I feel like out here, heavens are just part of the game. You have to do it. Like, 
What are you gonna do? Only hit the only hit ground <laughs> level? Like everyone out here is hitting heaven spots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have to, like, you can get by in New York and mm-hmm. not do have. It's like, you know, like not many writers are known for heaven spots yeah. out there. Yeah, yeah. The ones that are like really force it, you know, like right. doing crazy shit. But you don't have to. I feel like out here, it's like that's a part of the game. At the end of the day, like you have to. If you're an LA writer, you need to do the back of the billboard. Like you need to do. That's just like classic to me yeah. when I see that and stompers like like I was saying. Um, those are those are cool. I, I personally I like the ones that go over the street mm. where you climb and you just get a tag. I, I I you know what it's weird because that's like a I feel like as the older I get the more I, I appreciate the like the beginning stages of for me at least was like the evolution of graffiti was the tagging. Like you have to have a good hand style and you have to be able to climb and do something cool with a tag. If you can't do that shit then. I just I, I don't know I I don't oh like you climb some shit and you just do a tag yeah I, I see yeah, like it's worth Zest it. like, does a lot of that yeah fucking yeah. a that shit's fun that to yeah. me that's I like that shit like some people don't some people don't care and it doesn't even have to do with climbing a spot it just having a good tag mm-hmm. like I think if you have a, a shitty ass tag it just it doesn't I don't know man it's like I always feel like this like we're from Los Angeles we're the West Coast you gotta take pride in your fucking tags dude you don't be a lazy ass and do some bullshit you know some fucking chicken scratch or some just and if you can't do something crazy like clean or whatever do a clean straight tag and that's it you won't go out of style style a style goes out of style basic just never does you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? so just that's what that was my theory and my model all the time it was like like tags were just fun you know what i mean and yeah. if you have a hand you know, it looks cool it's like a different language when you write you know just you know what i mean mm-hmm. i don't know when did you when did you start showing your face because you know you were com- you're on your way here, right? And I was thinking like, I was kind of meditating before you got here, just like breathing, thinking, whatever, visualizing and shit. This guy getting walking with a ski mask. Yeah, <laughs> nah, nah, because I I see you know you show your face and shit. Yeah. And then I suddenly realized like, dude. oh yeah, he shows his face. You know, out of all the writers, like there are sh- people who show their face, but it's yeah. not it's not many. Right. Um And I was wondering when did you start doing that? Because there must have been a moment where you obviously didn't. You know what? I'll be honest with you. Uh, when we started traveling as a crew, mm-hmm. you know, I was just like, man, eh, fuck, who cares? You know, and you can only, I mean, hey, there's people that, that do a damn good job concealing their identity, right? Let's face it. That's cool. They got their shit. They were <laughs> fucking masks and duct tape, whatever the fuck they put on their face. And that's good. But, I mean, I just kind of, I tried for a long time and I just, I didn't want to do the effort of just, every time there's a camera out, start doing this shit or like putting like fucking dracula like my cape over my face i just i don't know dude it is what it is you know i'm not i'm not gonna be doing you know painting and fuck you lapd and do that weird shit but you know i don't know it just is i guess nothing ever came of it uh yeah no i mean been in trouble before been my door kicked in and yeah um yeah for sure but you know just hope it doesn't happen again. <laughs> yeah, you don't, was that a result, though, of showing the face or not? not really? I, I don't know. I mean, it could have been a result of some fucker dry snitching, ratting, or some, you know, there's always a fucking, there's always a snitch. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or there's always somebody who's mad at somebody or jealous of y- your graffiti success, or maybe not even graffiti success, just jealous, like, fuck this person, I'm going to tell them. You know, it, it happens. I, let's just face it, it happens. There's, you know, and LA's filled with fucking different riders, crews, and situations, and you know, you don't know somebody's uh, what they're going through. I don't know. You know, I mean, I don't know. I know a lot of people, but I don't know a lot of people. Mm-hmm. You know, and I don't know. I could have been a, a result of that, or maybe my face. I don't know. What's uh What's important to you today in life, for your life? Um, you know, as time gone on, I know you had a. Uh, when did when was your uh, when was your kid born? I was two and a half. Oh, dope. But, so relatively recently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How does it How does it feel? How has that changed like your life? I mean, for the most part, it, it hasn't changed who I am or anything like that. Like, I mean, I have my my priorities are now more strict. You know, what I mean, I have another kid too. I got, I got, I got dad. I got street, and then I got you know, art. I got whatever punk rock scene, you know, whatever the fuck that. Yeah. But I think it's just as time went on, it's just having structure is good. You know, what I mean, yeah. having a purpose. Because if you just wake up and have nothing to do. You get in trouble, you get bored. I, I, me, I do. I get real bored quick, like fast. I get bored with shit. I'm just like, fuck, I got to get out of here. Yeah. I'll do the Irish goodbye, you know, hey, yeah. just dip. But I think it's just having structure and purpose, you know what I mean? I like to wake up and know like, all right, you know, I, I got to go to work or something. I mean, not all the time, you know. 
Uh, I got a side job here. I got some art I could paint some tomorrow. And I like having options, you know what I mean? Go work out, do something, go meet up with my buddies, you know, Adam and the homies and, and my training partners and stuff. And we go and, you know, we just have fun. And it's yeah. like having structure is good, you know what I mean? Having a purpose, you know, yeah. schedule for me, at least for me, you know what I mean? I don't 100%, know no, else, I agree. For me, if I'm just fucking nothing to do, oh, I'm going to do some bad shit, you know? Yeah. I already know, <laughs> know it, you know what I mean? I get fucking caught up on something. Go get drink or go get drunk or go i don't know anything you know what i mean i seen you wearing a chromax t i seen you wearing a bruiser's t sheer terror yeah, uh yeah. you're into like you're into hardcore punk or like but then i know you're yeah. into ska no, right I, or, I like, or like I skinhead like, i like yeah <laughs> like what what what, what scene were you shit. were you uh what scene like hard I, what, what music scene were you like kind of a part of or what did you listen to you know to? what everything when i was when i was in high school i would go we would go to backyard uh, in San Gabriel Valley. We would always go to backyard gigs. That was the thing, like go see local bands and shit. You know, in high school, or we go see some hip hop shows in downtown or wherever the nearest show was. I would do both, or we'd go to raves, or we go to parties, house parties. It was just never was one thing that was just like hmm. that's my scene. I yeah. fucking liked it all. I did everything. I loved that shit. I loved being neutral and growing up and having options and not being so closed minded. Like fuck that. I hate yeah, that yeah, music yeah. and that sucks. And nah, I was like, this is dope. All that shit was dope. I like skating growing up. I like bands. I like, you know, hip hop. I like art, cars, like, you know, classic car. I, all that shit was fun to me. I know riding bikes, you know what I mean? It was fucking dope. And, uh, but I think for the most, like early on, early junior high, the, to me, the best shit was skating and like, you know, just all the homies, older brothers that were, so we were like in f between fourth and sixth grade, seventh grade. And all the older, all our buddies that had older brothers always had little launch ramps and shit like they would convert like badass shit. You know what I mean? They were just boom, shredding and stuff. And it seemed like everybody was a skater back then. You know what I mean? So I don't know. I, I have, I have all that shit I love doing, you know? But you, you didn't like, cause I see you wearing this, the fucking, you know, like the ska skinhead, like you got the, the jeans, the docks, you weren't like a part of that scene, like on a different level or? No, I am the uh my crew <laughs> SGV Unity yeah we're we're involved with that scene um we you know <laughs> we just, we police our scene we just we uh go to shows and hang out still to this day we had a, a big ass uh you know a barbecue this past weekend our buddies from Canada were in town what's up to the Canadians um you know guys from up north we had guys from different areas that came out and barbecue and we still keep it the way like I am with the graffiti guys. It's the same way I am with them. And they know each other. I bring them around both. Yeah. You know, if they need anything, it's like vice versa. They need anything, you know, and it's cool because a lot of my guys in that scene are all, you know, like working class, like plumbers, yeah. uh, electricians, carpenters. A lot of my buddies are carpenters, you know, you pipe fitters, welders. My lady's a welder. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? She's an iron worker. That's dope. Um, yeah. And it's like anytime we need something, it's just, hey, let me make a call. Boom. We do it. Or if I can't help them, I got somebody that will. You know mechanics and stuff like that and that's what we did we built a seven letter store in fairfax you know oh I mean? dope yeah our people came down and we fucking it was badass we had the guys the, the graffiti guys working there and we had my other guys working there and we we just fucking that shit was dope it yeah. was fun it's good experience you know what i mean and that to me that's that's what makes the machine work you know yeah yeah it was cool how is it uh uh being an electrician that's cool i like it yeah fucking it's fun man i think uh it's fun because like, once you get a grasp on that shit and, and you're able to, like, you got your side work lined up or whatever the fuck you got, you know what I mean, your union or whatever, not even if you're not union, whatever, you got your stuff lined up and you, you kind of figured it out and a rhythm that works for you, it's it, I think it's cool, you know what I mean? I wish now I could do stuff with art and, that, like, intertwine it. Sabre keeps telling me, yo, you got to do this and make, he's got a vision that I don't have and I'm trying to get that vision. I'm like, this mm -hmm. guy got some fucking, he's got some ideas right there, you know what I mean? The light bulb went on and he's telling me this stuff and I'm trying to, like, yeah, I'm just, I just got to make time, though, you know what I mean? I kind of, yeah. I got so much shit. It kind of sucks because sometimes I feel like the one-man gang. I got to, like, work. I got to try to fit in the art. I got to try to fit in the night art. I got to try to fit in the family. I got to try to fit in the, the, the workout schedule or, like, you know, all that stuff. And I just feel like sometimes there's not enough time in the day. You yeah, know what I mean? You no, get I've... fucked. You're like, damn. You wake up at 4, 5 in the morning. Your day starts at 6. And you look at your your clock, you're like, it's fucking 12. This day's over. It sucks. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's how I get. I get weird. I get like, damn. If I don't get a move on early, I'm just like, fuck, I wasted this day. And it's not fair because it's like, I always beat myself up over that shit. I try to do too many things at once. 
and you get nothing done like that. You know what I mean? Like, I feel the same way, man. I, I think about that all the time. I think about how, like, I only have X amount of things that I'm worried about that I'm doing. And even still, like, if, if you're trying to do all of them at a high level. Yeah. You can't fucking do all of them at a high Not level. Not at all, man. You're going nah. you to pick the one or two. But I even think th- sometimes two to do that shit at a high level is hard. Like, It's like, especially, you know, everyone in New York says that shit. Like, you got to hustle, you know, at the end of the day. You got to hustle. And it sucks because sometimes the thing that you have to devote yourself the most to might be that thing that is putting food on your table. Not that it sucks, oh, yeah. but, like, you might want to just make paintings. Yeah. But like his paintings put on food on your table right now. Like maybe in twenty oh. years if you do it right. Yeah, may, maybe. Exactly. Maybe, maybe. Maybe. It's a roll of the dice. But like you're living right now, you don't have that twenty years to yeah. like f- fuck around, you know? Yeah. Um I think too I, that's one thing I think like you said, like I wouldn't wanna I wouldn't wanna trade that like I like what I do and I like that I'm given a trade. I can go somewhere and I can provide for my family. I like yeah. that I can wake up and use my fucking hands. I got like I can't sit still as you keep saying I tw- I, I don't do good in the office I don't do good working in a cubicle I've had jobs where I worked <laughs> I went to some fucked up jobs I've had I was a pizza delivery guy I got fired because I would stop and visit the homies and drink beer and take pizza and too late and I get fired I worked at Bank of America for a while and I just I couldn't keep my mouth shut I would just lip off I was a uh, what else did I do What were you doing at Bank of America I was a teller I was a uh, the the little uh, what are they the tellers Okay Bank teller Yeah Ah <laughs> B of A Yeah for like Dude, it only lasted like maybe two months. It was, and that was it, you know. Um, I worked at, where else did I go, man? My hardware stores, I couldn't keep my mouth shut. I got in trouble. You know, I worked at, uh, I, just, I don't even know what I did. I did all kinds of shit. I had like random jobs, but the most one that I think benefited me was construction because it was everybody there is just like a shit talker and everybody's gritty and nobody's, you know, you could say what the fuck you want for the most part. I mean, yeah. now it's a different time. You get in trouble for saying anything now and it, you can't look at somebody that's a certain way, and it's it's weird. But that's I don't think I could do anything else. You know what I mean? Yeah. For now, you know, yeah. I don't want to be a hundred year old man doing construction, but you know what I mean. For the most part, it's cool for now. That's what's up. Yeah. That's cool, man. Um, you know, thank you for you know coming on this. Yeah. Appreciate it immensely. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, we tried last time, but shit didn't line up. But this time, so <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right yeah, away, yeah, yeah. yo. Thank you so much. Yeah. Fuck yeah. You guys rule, man. Thanks for having me. Hell yeah. Peace.